Hello and welcome Leica fans. Today's video I'm going to give you 41 tips for Leica M users. Everything I can think of to get the most from your Leica M camera. Some comments are specific to my new Leica M10 but others are more general that can be applied to all Leica M cameras and even some non Leica M cameras. To make the video a bit more interesting I'm going to overlay my voice over three days of vlog style footage when I was shooting in Poland. It's going to be mostly travel photography and street photography with the like M10 camera, plus a few of my usual model portraits. If that sounds of interest, grab a chair and your favorite drink and join me as we head to Poland. Hello, welcome, Matt here from MrLike.com. So point number one, this is probably true of any new camera equipment and especially a new camera. What I noticed when getting the Leica M10 was it inspired me to shoot in situations where I've done it 50 times, such as on a plane, for example. So I'm always a bit self-conscious on a plane, so the last thing I want to do is like pull up, pull out a proper camera and start taking pictures. But the camera just inspired me to take pictures. I felt like I was missing out if I wasn't taking pictures. And as you saw from that random toilet shot, even photos of normal things you definitely wouldn't take a photo of, I was starting to take a photo of. In, in the way it seemed like art, I, I don't know. I was just seeing things differently or because I had a new camera. So. That may not be M10 specific, but I think that's true of any new camera. Point number two, when paired with a small lens, the like M10 or like any like M camera gives you a really good everyday camera setup. And what many of you may not realize, especially if you Q shooters, is if you use a small lens on a like M camera, it's actually smaller than a like a Q camera. So I prefer this setup personally because I prefer the, the full manual manual experience. Point number three, to extend the battery life of the Leica M10, I've turned off my auto review in the menu. So that means I can get now around 500 plus photos per charge, even using rangefinder and a little bit of um, live view. That being said, point number four, I've extended my power saving from two minutes to five minutes because what I realized was if the camera was timing out after two minutes, it takes so long to start up, relatively speaking, that I was then missing photos. So I've extended that to five minutes. If you shoot kind of more, less infrequently, you could maybe extend it to 10 minutes. Number five, as many of you Leica fans will know, the Leica M10 is not as quiet as the Leica M10P, and it's definitely not quiet enough to be like 100% stealthy in a quiet environment. If you take a photo inside a train, for example, people do notice. That being said, if you turn off live view, as I'm sure most of you will do anyway, it is quieter with live view turned off compared to when the live view is on. Number six, if you love the idea of turning your Leica M camera into a point and shoot machine, I highly recommend the Voigtlander Snapshot Scope R 25mm f4. 25mm you can just use the entire viewfinder to uh, compose your photos and I t take off the 1.4 magnifier so I can see the full view. This lens is different to other lenses where it stops at I think it's seven meters, one meters and three meters with like a little lump. And so that means you don't have to look at the lens at all. And pretty much when the lens is set to, I think it's 1.5 meters, almost everything is in focus anyway. So it really is true point and shoot. And I absolutely just love the size and low weight of this setup. Number seven, if something makes you feel confident and good inside, it can only be a good thing, right? I can highly recommend like M cameras as a feel good factor when you have them. And that brings me nicely to the next point. Leica M cameras are actually a really good investment, especially if you buy them used. I keep checking the use prices of my older Leica M240 and the use price just seems to have been the same for like the last three years, maybe even longer. If you see some of my blog posts that I've quoted figures, yes, Leica M cameras are more expensive relatively to Leica Q cameras and Leica SL cameras, but that being said, they retain their value much better than both mentioned cameras. Number nine, I think this is a new one for me, wearing a camera rather than bagging a camera. If you're actually wearing the camera and having it on you, you're just ready to get all those photos that you may often miss when the camera's in your bag. You're like, oh, I can't be bothered to get it out of my bag. Or by the time you've got the camera out your bag, you've already missed the photo. So this is definitely something I've learned in the recent weeks after getting the M10. Number 10, probably as is true with all famous photographers, if you're wearing a camera, you're going to shoot, shoot more photos and then it's purely a numbers game. If you shoot more, even if you only have 1% of keepers, the more you shoot, the more good photos you're going to get as a result of shooting more. So I've found I've actually got a few quite nice photos as a result of shooting more than I used to. 
number 11 after getting like an m10 camera i've started to use auto iso and it seems pretty good in kind of flat light i've not used it yet in direct sunlight relating to that number 12 i'm using a 0.7 exposure compensation to protect my highlights and number 13 i'm using a center weighted light meter for all the photos that you're seeing Number 14, I've got my auto ISO capped at 12,500 and I happily shoot up to 6,400 ISO even for portrait photos. Number 15, and like my Leica M240, the Leica M10 has got the ISO dial on the top which means you've got like full analog controls and I absolutely love that. I tend to leave the ISO dial up if I'm kind of changing it manually for portraits but do be aware if you leave it up when you're walking around it can get knocked and so it's between settings and then it looks for me it overexposed some of my pictures. 16. Talking of ISO, I've set my M to 12,500 ISO, which means I've now got from 100 to 12,500 ISO settings on the dial itself without needing to go into any menus. 17. When shooting street photos in Poland, I set my shutter speed to either 250th of a second or 500th of a second to try to help me capture motion. That being said, when I shoot portraits in low light, I go down as low as 60th of a second quite often, and I can go even lower if I need to, being a rangefinder camera. Number 18 is predominantly a black and white shooter. I have my camera set to black and white JPEG view, but capturing raw only. This means when you play back the photos, you see black and white, and if you use it live view, you see black and white. As with my other Leica camera files, once I shoot raw, I just then apply my Mr. Leica black and white preset in Lightroom, and that's pretty much job done. I'm in the process of developing like a more complete set of uh, presets for the Leica M10 for myself so I can make those available on the blog once they're ready. Number 19, so not to confuse my M10 files with other photos from my other Leica cameras, I've changed the file name to begin with M10. So you can do this for any Leica camera and it makes it easy to spot your SL photos, your Leica Q photos and your M photos, assuming you have more than one camera. Number 20, after getting my Leica M10, I've switched from my usual wrist strap to a neck strap for most of my street photos, and I really love having both hands free. Number 21, this sounds very self-explanatory, but a black camera seems much more stealthy than my silver M240. I just seem to get noticed a lot less. To add to the stealth factor, if you use a black neck strap and a small black lens on a black camera, it really does give a super um, unobtrusive camera, which you can use for street photos. Number 22, if you're looking to get a Leica M camera and you're on a tight budget, look to get a silver camera instead of black because they're normally cheaper. Another bonus is silver cameras don't show the marks as much as black cameras. Number 23, as mentioned in a previous video, if you worry that you can't get precise focus with your rangefind camera, get a 1.4 magnifier or magnifier adapter as seen here from like Lens Lab. I can put a link below, I love this, and it works particularly well for especially anything longer than 50mm and say 50mm for portrait photography. I then take off the rubber surround and that stops it getting knocked when I'm walking and also it makes it slightly smaller and I love small. Number 24 is predominantly a portrait photographer. 24 megapixels has always been more than enough for my needs. Now I'm starting to do a bit of street photography, I start to understand why people want more megapixels. If you're doing grab shots, you don't always get a clean composition in camera and so sometimes your photo will look better by cropping afterwards. I can definitely see the benefits of owning a like M10R or like M11, for example, smiley face. <laughs> Number 25, for street photography, if you're using your camera in auto settings, you will have to expect to do more processing in post because, for example, you might have slightly underexposed photos. My street photos did require a bit more fixing in post, as it were, but almost all the photos you see here are just in-camera crop plus preset added. Number 26, one negative when it comes to range front of cameras is you don't have that what you see is what you get to view through the lens as you would with say mirrorless cameras, unless of course you're using live view or the Visoflex. That means you end up taking multiple photos instead of getting it in camera the first time as I would with say my Leica SL. Number 27, after coming from the mirrorless Leica SL camera, another problem with range front of cameras is many lenses are not exactly calibrated to the camera body, which means you don't get precise focus. Just to note, this is more of a problem with vintage lenses also using adapters. Number 28, this brings me nicely onto portraits. You can now focus for portrait shots with fast lenses with the rangefinder if the rangefinder is correctly calibrated. And as mentioned, if you use, for example, 1.4 magnifier 2. Number 29, for any fellow Leica M film shooters, 
the best tool to get better with your Leica M6, for example, is to actually own a digital Leica M camera too. Both cameras operate pretty much identically, and so you're much better to practice with a digital camera where you can shoot for free. As it were, as we know, film is really expensive now, and also you don't have to wait for the film to be developed to see if you've got the correct exposure, the correct focus, etc. I've had a number of photographers around the world make the most of my zoom service, in particular where they've really struggled with Leica M rangefinder cameras. These guys often come from an automatic digital cameras and they just love the idea of owning a proper film like an M camera. So they buy one and then the whole focus and exposure and all the, the manual numbers you need to do experience is just too overwhelming. So they shoot what they think is correct, wait a week, get the film back, rubbish photos, send them to me and say, Matt, what's wrong with the camera? Repeat the process and then maybe the focus is wrong on all the photos. I just think to myself, if only I could like hand you my like M10 or M240, for maybe even one hour, it would solve your problems instantly. So if you are struggling with a like M film camera, try to find a friend or a shop that will lend you a digital M camera, even for just an hour, and I'm pretty sure you'll fix all your problems more or less instantly. That brings me on to number 30. As someone that enjoys shooting film, but doesn't really have the time to do so, even though I've just bought myself an enlarger and it's still in the box after two months, if you shoot a like M10 digital camera, it can be the M10, M10P, M10R, monochrome, etc. That's going to be as near as you can get to a digital analog experience. You don't need to use the menus at all, so it's full manual dials on the top. It feels and looks like an analog camera, and if you turn off your auto preview, you don't see the photos as you're taking the pictures. So it's not until you get home and maybe download them on the computer. It could be a day later, it could be a week later you get to enjoy the delayed gratification which we get when shooting film. So there's a lot of benefits if you want, as near as you can get to film in terms of the shooting experience, highly, highly recommend Leica M10 series cameras. I think the Leica M11 is obviously amazing, but I think it's starting to go a little bit more electronic than the Leica M10, but let me know in the comments what you think. Number 31, if you know anything about Leica cameras, the Leica M cameras are not as weather sealed as the Leica Q cameras, which is why many people like the Q2 and Q3, for example. That being said, you can use the Leica M10 in kind of reasonable, poor conditions and still capture those amazing photos that the bad weather brings. I had no problems shooting in the snow and mist and fog and things during the three days in Poland. Number 32, many people buy Visoflex for their like M camera to try to make it more like a like a SL camera so you got the full mirrorless experience. That being said, I'm determined not to get an EVF for my camera and I really don't think you need it. As you can see, I had to wear my geeky accounting glasses that I bought about 10 years ago for these shoots at night because I can't see at night. And even though I shot with the 75 1.5 Voigtlander lens, I still managed to use live view when needed for kind of precise focus when I couldn't see because there was like snow in the viewfinder. I guess to expand on that slightly, it really depends on what setup that you use. If you use a one camera setup and you need one camera to do everything and your one camera is like an M camera, then yes, I see the reason you would get a, an EVF. I've got an EVF on the M240. The three biggest benefits I can think of for say a Visoflex is number one, you can use a non-range front of coupled lenses. Number two, if your camera's out of calibration, you can still use it, which is why I originally got the Visoflex for my M240. And number three, you have the what you see is what you get to view, which means that if you say shooting at the sun or shooting through leaves, you have the advantage as if you were using an SL camera, even though it's an M camera. And to finish on this point, I think, as I've said in other videos, if you're using your Visoflex more than, I'd say, 50% of the time on your M camera, I'd highly recommend thinking about getting an SL camera instead. Number 33, specific to the M10, the live view lag is now completely gone compared to the terrible lag on the M240. I will do a full video comparing these two cameras. Number 34, an advantage over the earlier like M8 and like M9, which don't have live view. Live view is really useful for either very low down shots or as here, overhead shots. Linking to that number 35, I prefer live view for precise compositions and then I use range finder for quick compositions. Live view obviously lets you see exactly what you're going to get. So for someone like me that wants to precisely frame up their shot, I find it a real benefit. Number 36, if you plan to use bigger, heavier lenses on your like M camera, I'd highly recommend getting a thumbs grip or thumbs up. 
there's various ones you can use some blocks the hot shoot some don't so depending on if you shoot flash if you shoot flash or if you use wide angle viewfinders in your accessory shoe then get the one that doesn't block the accessory shoe that being said if like me you love using small lenses much of the time you don't need a thumbs grip or thumbs up and that is less cost less size and makes it as minimal as possible for me i bought the black like m10 because i wanted a super minimal setup and i plan to use it with small lenses and as less things added to it as possible that being said number 37 one thing i did find i needed quite quickly was the soft release because the amount of travel needed to press the shutter seems longer than on the q cl sl and m240 so i added that for one of my uh, like at our film cameras. Number 38, if you enjoy using vintage lenses on your Leica M camera, if you want to use live view, you will have a problem because it will say no lens attached. What you need to do to fix this is you need to go into the auto lens detect section and turn off auto lens detect. And then if you set that to manual, you can then use live view when using any vintage lens that the camera doesn't recognize. As you see, I'm using the Voigtlander snapshot scope on 25 f4 ltm lens and that lens is not recognized by the camera so i have to remember to keep turning off my auto lens detect in camera before i can use live view number 39 talking of vintage lenses i forgot what some of the drawbacks were when it comes to vintage rangefinder lenses when i use my like sl if i want to focus closer than any given lens close focus distance i just use my close focus adapter by seven artisans and then let's say a lens will only focus as close as one meter, I can probably get as close as half a meter with the same lens on the Leica SL. Now I'm back to a Leica M camera with a Leica M10. I forgot how far away one meter is with a say 50 mil lens or even worse, a 35 mil or longer lens. If you're new to range front of cameras, definitely be aware of this. There is a huge difference in both depth of field and enjoyment factor if you compare a 50 mil that focuses to 0.7 meters and a 50 mil that's only focuses to one meter. Number 40, if the Leica M camera is your only camera and you want to get the most from your one camera setup, I'd highly recommend getting at least one lens that focuses closer than 0.7 meters. What I mean by this is, although the camera will only focus to 0.7 meters with the rangefinder, you can use live view to focus closer. A couple of obvious examples would be something like the, if, the, if you've got a big enough budget, the Leica 35mm f2 APO, which goes to 0.3 meters, which I think is the closest focusing M mount lens available. Then you can use lenses like the Light Lens Lab uh, 35mm f2 8 element replica, that will go to 0.5 meters. And then you've got the new lenses from, um, if I say this correctly, Typoc, I think they go to 0.45 meters. So I have got a lens review to come on that. I've just received it in the post this morning. So. If you want to see a review on the Typoc Cimera 35 1.4 and the 28mm, I'll do the 35mm first, so feel free to subscribe. And if you've lasted this far into the video, I'd love it if you could hit the like button. Uh, equally, feel free to comment below if you like this style of video with a bit more behind the scenes footage showing where I'm shooting and what I'm shooting. If you want to see more of the model photography, as you saw, very brief samples of, I'll share behind the scenes uh, videos on the usual Patreon. I can put a link below to Patreon and as always thanks to my amazing patrons and then if you want to see the example photos and say you don't want to do Patreon if you follow me on Instagram you can see the photos are shot with the models on there. Number 41 if you're fed up of getting greasy finger marks on your LCD screen I highly recommend getting matte screen cover protectors. I got one from eBay. I use those on my like SL and it never seems to show the marks compared to my M240 or like a Q or like a CL. I'm still waiting for the screen protector to arrive from my Leica M10, but you will see that in a future video. Any video wouldn't be complete without a few bonus points. So bonus point number one, don't underestimate how satisfying it is to carry less cameras and lighter cameras. Normally I used to carry two backpacks on these sorts of trips. And so I just wouldn't have been able to walk around doing things like this and have hands free to be able to take photos, record behind the scenes video and everything else. For this trip I just took my 18 litre Wotan Craft pilot bag rucksack and then in that I have a 2 litre pilot bag which I can take out as like a small bag when needed. But for the street photography I just have the camera around my neck as you saw 
and then the backpack on my back completely which gives me completely hands free. Bonus point number two. I don't think I've ever really truly appreciated how good bad weather is for great photos. Feel free to comment below but the severe weather warning as they called it the hit Gdansk just gave me amazing photography opportunities whether it was a heavy mist on day one or the snow on day two and day three. It's kind of things that you don't really appreciate. So the snow reflects the light, which gives better light and nicer photos. People are wearing kind of more clothes and say hats and things. So often they, they're kind of blinkered with their vision and they can't hear you. So you can get a much closer kind of street photography and people don't even notice. Next, everybody just looks cool and kind of fighting the weather. They're kind of doing their own thing and you can carry on taking pictures. All the everyday normal scenes just look amazing in these kind of freak weather situations. I mean, just look at the light on the snow from the train there. Oh, my eyes, I was just so happy taking pictures. You couldn't believe it. I was just as happy taking the street photos in this on this trip than I was doing the portrait photos. I tried to think of every tip I could think of to share for fellow Leica M users, but if I forgot any, please do listen below. A big thanks for watching, especially if you got to the end without skipping. If you want to see more like M videos, check this playlist next.